Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And it's been a week since I received my very first enormous shipment from uh, Jolly Farmer for my hanging baskets and all those beautiful things. And it is, what is it, March 7th? It's March 7th. I'm starting my tomatoes and some peppers for the nursery here. I'm starting them in the, actually these are the echinacea trays that I had um, some plants come in last week. This is the vinca vine tray and this is the echinacea tray because I've spent the last week potting stuff up and I couldn't record all of that, but I did record some of it. So I wanted to show you guys some clips of everything that's been going on here the last week. It's been um, kind of crazy. We've been seeing what we have in the back barn. We've been having to wait for bales of soil to thaw because they're all frozen in the barn. We did bring out several, but we're going through them rather quickly. Um, so I'm starting right here, mortgage lifter tomatoes, and I'm starting them in this and we'll transfer them. But I'm gonna start a tray of these. And then I also have some Cherokee purple tomatoes that I'm gonna start and then some other varieties as well. I'm getting these going because they need to be nice and big and healthy for greenhouse sales. In just about eight weeks from now, I think I'll be opening up. So I don't have an exact date for that, but it's coming soon. All right, anyway, here are the clips and this is a Bluetooth speaker, guys. People keep asking me, it's a Bluetooth speaker. I watch Survivor or listen to podcasts while I'm doing these things when I'm not recording for you guys. So here are the clips from the past week. Things are extremely green here and I'll take you guys into greenhouse number one after I show you guys these clips. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm starting the process of potting up all of the plants that I just got in this week from Jolly Farmer. Oh, now I have to set this machine up. This is my pot filler. I have to set it up for the four and a half inch pots because it was set up for the trade gallons that I was using to pot up my bare root perennials. But I had a visit the other day from the previous owners of this machine, a retired nursery couple just from about 15, 20 minutes away and they really, <laughs> taught me a few things. I was actually missing a couple of parts and also there was a part that was really bent and it was bent so much that it wasn't performing what it should be. And I'll show you right here, this V right here. Um, so this part <laughs> fell off my husband's truck when we were driving this machine home. Um, and this was severely bent. And now we know exactly how it's supposed to look and where it's supposed to sit. And then this railing too, this pipe goes down and that is what helps you and guides you along as you're moving your trays. We also found some trays for the trade gallons, which now I can do like 12 at a time. 12 at a time. Let me show you what I mean. So I found these trays in the back that fit the trade gallons perfectly. So now we've been able to, instead of, I started out doing one at a time, then I did two at a time. And now we're able to move these through at a record pace. And this is now performing what it should be, which is scraping the top off. Like I said, this is a total learning experience for me. The first time I used this machine was right in front of this camera. So I can't hide any of the rookie mistakes, right? I'm showing you guys everything. Right now I have to add a fresh bale. Also learned a lot about that too, guys, because guess what? The back closes. You're supposed to close it before you mix it, which reduces the dust. I didn't realize, or I guess I forgot that you close it. You close the dang thing and that way a lot less dust is kicked up. I've got my four inch pots right here. Um, so I have to raise this up in order for the pots to meet the scraper and all that stuff. So we'll get that done right now and then I'll get going with these because I'm potting up my Vinca vines and the German ivy are the first things that I'm going to pot up. So I'm going to try to get those done today. I'm going to start hanging baskets later because my tags are delivering today for the baskets. Um, all of the other tags already came, but the hanging basket tags are shipping or delivering today. So I wanted to wait until I had the actual tags for the baskets before I did anything. I'm very nervous about messing anything up when it comes to labeling. At my farm, that's not a big deal because it's growing in my ground and if it's yellow and not red, it's okay. I'm still gonna cut it and I'm still gonna use it. But I don't wanna sell something that turns out to be the wrong color. I'm sure mistakes will be made and I'm sure that's gonna happen. I mean, heck, the supplier could supply me the wrong things and I would think it's red, they would think it's red, the customer thinks it's red, and it's blue. But hey, I would like to minimize that if I could. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this machine, move it up a little bit so that the trays are um, the right height to go through. I think that might be too low. This is for 
flats, um, like six packs and stuff. So I'm gonna go down one. Yes, that's perfect. Now, just to make this a little bit better, I'm gonna lower this whole entire thing. Okay, so now it's actually touching the top. That means that's not, so that needs to go up a teeny tiny, like literally teeny tiny bit. Okay. All right, I set up a little workstation here. I just brewed a cup of coffee. This is actually not decaf, this is regular coffee because it's so good. This, um, a friend of mine, Jerry, came over the other day, probably two weeks ago, and he came in with a cup of coffee, and I was like, what is that amazing aroma? And he said, it's a caramel apple K-cup with French vanilla creamer. And so I had to get it. Anyway, it's delicious. So I have the German Ivy. This is the very first um, plant that I'm gonna pot up here. The back of the book here has the culture, so I'm going to find where it says German Ivy, and it gives me all the information. Okay, so right here it says for like a 10 inch pot, like if I wanted to do a hanging basket, it tells me I need four to five plugs per pot. But if I'm just doing a four inch pot, I need one plug for per pot. It also gives you the temperatures that the plants like to be. And it also gives you um, how many, um, like the parts per million for uh, fertilizer and all that stuff. It says easy to grow, provide shade in spring when light levels rise. Treat like foliage, do not over water. So these are all things that I'm trying to um, hammer into my brain. Like, oh, German ivy doesn't like to be too wet. It also likes a little bit of shade. So I did um, add that, like an upper level of the table. So things like maybe German ivy can go underneath that, which is perfect because I do need something that likes a little bit more shade um, if I'm going to raise up the center like that. And um, so basically, let me explain that quickly. Just to explain that a little bit better, I said to my cousin, maybe I can have a center part that is a little bit higher. So we grabbed one of these tables that I already had and put it on the center. And I was like, oh, so this adds like a little bit of a different, maybe you could shop from here, but also you can shop from up here. There'll be plants up here as well. And I wanted to put shade loving plants underneath there so that I could still utilize that space. This is not going to be my typical workstation. My workstation would probably be a different greenhouse, but this is what I'm doing right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a tag in every pot. All right, the German Ivy, it looks amazing. Now on to the Vincas. They are like this, but according to this culture sheet in my book, it says I'm supposed to plant two plugs per four inch pot. So that's what I shall do, but I have to go get the tags, which I thought I brought out here already, but I must've left them on the counter because I just warmed my coffee up. I know I'm gonna need more um, pots than this, but I'm starting with this. And after I'm done with these, I will be watering them in, but I'm waiting for, um, to fill up that whole section with my, I think I'm going to do the grasses today, grasses and vines before my sister gets here and we can start on the hanging baskets. I just messaged a grower friend of mine. They're called the North street nursery in Pulaski. Um, it's about an hour from here. And I asked them if they also plant two Vinca plugs per four inch pot, because maybe they get away with doing just one. Maybe I'll experiment with just doing one and see how that goes. They're so cute. It says on the culture sheet on these to pinch to encourage branching. All of these appears, appear to be pinched already, but I'll do a little bit more research, ask a few more questions to see when I should stop pinching because there is a point where you should stop um, for certain species. This one was rooting into the na its neighbor. Rude. Evicted. Okay, these three trays are filled. So, 
So the, 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 the hookah goes in the front. B A B A. Too close, like right here. B A B A. Well, we've been plugging away, pun intended. So my sister stopped by after she got out of work. We started doing the hanging baskets. We only did about 35 of them. Um, and then I also was able to pot up some canna and some junkus and what else did we get done? The German Ivy, the Vinca, some stuff I had on camera, some stuff I had off camera, but the baskets are now hanging. We have some of them. We were able to do the remember when, and then I made up a couple different ones with some white calabrocoa and also some Vinca vines. I see a fungus gnat. I'm gonna try and kill it. I don't know where it went. I have more helpers coming this evening. I am at the pot filler for most of today, just filling pots, getting them ready, putting them over here, and that's where my sister and I are gonna be making the combo kits. Um, it's just kind of chaos right now, but it's a good chaos. I feel, I mentioned in a previous video, I feel less anxiety now that the plants are here. Obviously there's more work, but overall I'm feeling less anxiety. Now everything is kind of in my control. I have eyes on the plants. I know what to do, sort of. Some things I'm having to guess on, but we'll figure it out, right? Really wish that heater would stop. Tonight we're gonna be doing um, more of the combo kits, but also the hanging geranium baskets and the uh, fuchsia baskets. I'm gonna get some of those pots filled so that when my sister comes, we can just start plugging away. I showed you guys the ferns, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grow these ferns to a hanging basket size. I might just put these in a four and a half or a five and a half inch pot and see how big they get. The ferns typically take between 20 and 30 weeks to be able to be big enough to be in a basket, but I could probably grow a smaller pot and sell it that way. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm gonna have these uh, big enough for baskets by the time spring comes around. I honestly, I kind of wish they stayed this size. They're the cutest thing. Literally breathing easier in here. <sighs> yeah, it's humid. It's humid and I have fans on order. I have a couple of fans, but I have some higher powered fans. They're coming, I need to install one on each end. There were box fans in here. They just weren't doing the job as well as I need them to. I need a lot of air circulation. I don't want any, well, I wanna make it, I guess, the least susceptible to disease. So much work to do. So I'm gonna get started. All right, back to the pot filler. I'm thinking about setting up as many baskets as I can right here in the atrium on this counter. This is a really nice height to work from. And like I said uh, in a previous video, I am going to be taking out this counter and replacing it with something a little bit more not concrete. Woo! Tripped. Not a big deal. On camera, recording. Double layer baskets. Double layer. I'm ready for my sister. I've got the water going over here. Uh, because I am washing pot. My sister is in the back of greenhouse number one. She's potting up a couple of combo kits. I have some of the fuchsias and these are going to go in these green pots. This is one called Swing Time. It's beautiful. It is like a hot pink and white and I'm gonna put four in a diamond pattern. And I think I only have enough for about 13 pots. I wonder if I could get away with just three in a pot, but the instructions say four in a pot. So I don't know. So I will do what the book says. I always start with my tags if I have some. I do have a number of tags that are on back order, which kind of stinks, but what are you gonna do? Okay, now I have a tray of Calabrocoa. This one is called Cappuccino. And I am going to do single hanging baskets of just Cappuccino. And I'm probably gonna do maybe 10 or 12 baskets with this tray.
Yeah, I really love them. Look how cute they are. Aren't they cute? Greenhouse number one is pretty much full. This is about to transform in here. You'll notice that we put this piece of uh, zip board here because the heater's right here, the thermostat's right here. So obviously that's gonna heat up quickly and I don't want it to turn the thermostat off and it still be 50 degrees over here. So that's why we put this board up to kind of deflect the heat a little bit. We'll see how well that works, but otherwise um, we've got to fill this house. This is Brad's way of busting on me. He was bringing them all down. They're all supposed to go right there. He spread them out. <laughs> what a punk. Greenhouse number one is beginning to look, well, like a greenhouse. We still have a lot more work to do, a lot more hanging baskets to make, and so much exciting things happening, and I'll bring you guys along for the ride. But until then, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she beautiful?